And now, for today's message, already in progress. There'd be leadership in heaven just like it is in earth. But there'd be no wear and tearing out. You know, just wear. I know some people, I'm tired. There is no tired in this thing. Peace and joy. Well, that's the way earth was designed initially. We're not, we're not supposed to be burned out and always tired and, you know, not able to do what we've been assigned to do. No. He restores us day by day. What does he do? He re- now, y'all know these scriptures and this stuff, but we got to use. You know, there's food in the house, but if you don't eat it, you can die. Well, there's food in the Word. And if you don't eat it, you're going down. And God doesn't want us going what? Down. This is serious business. Amen. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? God doesn't want you going out. Sure was nice. No, it wasn't nice. Why? Because their assignment has been put on somebody else because they did not complete theirs. You don't need nobody doing your assignment. You need to be able to do your own assignment. And your assignment is not always to be out in the front. Mm -mm. Wherever God has assigned you, when you get there, you'll know it. If you have any wisdom at all, you'll know it. And God will show off and show out just for you. Hunch neighbor said, he's looking for me right now. Amen. I'm about ready. Come on, son. I'm about ready. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Now, uh, make a note of this. We're working on this. There are how many actions required for experiencing kingdom prosperity? All right. Number one, giving. Number two, number three. Now, don't, don't just holler these out. Let's digest them down. What was number one? What's number one? For so, God so what? That he what? What's number two? Working. Now, working is not a bad thing. It's a what? Good thing. What's number three? What is it? As a man thinks in his heart, so is what? And what's the next one? Trusting. What is it? Trusting is having confidence. What is it? Having confidence. Having what? Confidence. First of all, in the word of what? God. You must have confidence in God's word. The Bible says God is not a man that he should what? Neither the son of man that each should what? Change his mind. So we have to understand God ain't going to change his mind about what he's already said about us. He will not. Say he will not. All right, what's the next one? Waiting. Say waiting. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of what? They shall run and not be what? They shall walk and not what? Tell your neighbor, that's me all over. Amen. That blood pressure ain't getting you down. Amen. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Them diabetes ain't getting you down. Uh-uh. You ain't going crazy. Tell you, you ain't going crazy. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No, you got some things coming from God. Come on. So you got some things coming from God that's going to bring you out of that. All right. What's the next one? Talking. Say talking. You got to talk. Tell me you got to talk. What did God say about your mountain? Say unto the mountain. What do you tell it to do? Be thou removed and be thou what? And shall not what? Oh, Lord, we just dropped something. We just dropped something. Try one more time. What did he say? What did the scripture say? Say unto the mountain, be thou removed and be thou what? And shall not what? But shall what? Believe. There we go. See, you got to get it. Don't doubt in your heart, because doubting is available. But doubting is not a, nothing that a child of God should be able or even trying to partake of. Amen. Doubt will get you out. Amen? amen. Now, when I say amen, you just don't say amen to be allowed to devil, okay? Because you don't want devil, okay? Doubt won't get you out, because you're not going to be what? Yeah. Doubting. You remember doubting Thomas? He wasn't believing what God had what? Said. And that's not who you are. You are not just a believer, but you're one what? That has faith. That's beyond what? Believing. 
Faith is accepting as a fact. That's all it is. But faith has conceived the idea and has already taken place in his or her life. It's already mine. What is it? It's faith takes. It doesn't wait. Faith what? Takes. It doesn't wait. When you have faith for something, it's already yours. You start talking like it. You start walking like it. You actually start looking like you already what? Got it. Tell you if I got it now. Now, they, they don't know what it is that you've been praying to God about, what you've been putting on the table for God to put in your life, but you already what? No. And you've already received it. You remember that song we used to sing? I'll take it. I'll take it now. When? I'll take it now. Well, that's what God wants us to do. Now, what does he say? Now faith is. What is it? The substance of things hoped for. And the evidence. What is the evidence? Faith is. So you have to see it even though it's not visible in the natural or to your eyes. I got it. Let me say it. I got it. It belongs to me. God has already said it, and I have already received it in the name of Jesus. So you start acting differently. You start acting differently. You're not impatient now. You're not struggling now. You are a haver. <laughs> Say, I'm a haver. I'm not a needer. I am. Now, I'm not talking about his name now. I'm talking about need, N-E-E-D. <laughs> okay, so we are what now? We are have us. It belongs to us. It's our natural right. It's our spiritual right. Amen. God cannot lie. If he said it, it is so. If he said it, it is so. So he has said, and it is so. It rightfully belongs to me. It's mine. It's my property. It's whatever it is that I have put my faith on the line for. Amen. Now, when you put your faith on the line for something, you've got to know that it's in the book. Amen. In other words, somebody else's mate ain't yours. You can't, you can't be believing for them. You have to, you know, as pastors, we have to just be straight up with it. Cause so believing for somebody else's husband, believing for somebody else's wife. And a lot of that crazy stuff is going on in the church. He might be sitting with her, but he mine. I already got him on my faith list. Get him off your faith list. Get her off of your faith list because that is contrary to the word of what? Y'all look at me strange, but you know it's true. And it's not God. Say name is not God. See, you got to think the thoughts of God, and you, you already know that you can hear the voice of God. Amen. So God can do what he has already established that he chooses to do for you because of your willful obedience to him. God is a good God. And he loves himself some me. Oh, y'all say that too, huh? Who does he love? No, wait, 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 wait now. Wait. I want y'all to be real nice and say he loved the right one to say he loves past. <laughs> love deep, okay, right? <laughs> okay. But you have to have it in your mind. Look, when something does not come through for you, it's not that God is angry with you. It's that the devil is trying to deceive you and get you mad at God, thinking that the word doesn't work. But the word of God does work. How often does it work? All the time. All the time. All the time. Just give me a chance to get yourself together, to be at peace. That's why he says, be still. And know that I am what? God. What does it want you to do? Be still and know that I am God. That's what God wants us to do. Because when you get all antsy and stuff, it causes your body to malfunction. Blood pressure goes up. You know, heart get to beating strains. And all the, all the crazy things start happening to you. And that is not the will of God for you. You and I have already been given 120 years to live in this earth. Now, I know a lot of y'all probably don't want to look at your picture when you get to be 120, 
But you know, when you get to be 120, you should be looking better than you are now. Amen. Getting better and better. Say, I'm getting better and better. Getting better, and better. Looking, better and better. looking better and better. Every day, every day, every day, every day. Amen. That's what God's will is. Don't ever put yourself down. Stop talking about your feelings and start talking about your faith. Faith changes things. Feelings just break them down. But faith what? Changes things. So you and I have to put our faith on the line. Amen. You get tough as snuff and don't even dip the stuff. <laughs> you need to know you got the right one, baby. Amen. The church has yet to decide that God's word is emphatically true. The church. Well, if I get this, well, I got a bill coming. He said, sowers are reapers. Sowers are reapers. No sower, no reaper. Amen. Doers are receivers. If you do the word, you receive the benefit of the word. Why y'all trying to make this hard on pastor? This ain't no hard assignment. We just got to get it right. God has already established that he wants to bless us beyond our wildest imagination. He wants us to be living in earth just like we would be living in heaven. That's God's will. He doesn't want us struggling down here. Working hard for my money. You had the wrong job. Uh-uh. It's not hard. You work smart. How'd your neighbor tell you? You just work smart. Some, yeah, I see it ain't a lot of people like to work up in the news. <laughs> Let's get off that work thing, Pastor. <laughs> All right. But you got to understand, God has already given us an assignment, and the assignment that God has given us is easier than anything that you could ever imagine. My yoke is easy, and my burdens are light. So take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. Rest, not burn out all the time. If you could see y'all like I see y'all right now. And you say, Pastor, this is a hurry up class. This is a hurry up. <laughs> we got to get this in real time. You got to understand, the enemy knows how to deceive you by lying to you. And a lot of times we got so many lies in our head that our hearts don't want to answer. And we got to get to the point that God's word has first place and final authority. God's on my side. I will not fear. I will not fear what the enemy can do to me. Amen. Hey, don't you know he loves you? If somebody is willing to give their only begotten son for you, don't you know that means that you are powerfully important? Amen. But what are you going to do about it? You ought to make sure that nobody on your street, nobody in your community go to hell. They got to go to heaven. They might not become a member of a God faith, but they'll become a member of some church somewhere because you have lived a life and you've proven to them that the word works. Amen. That's neighbor said the word works. The word works. All right. And then next we have thanking. Say thanking. Come on. For, what are we talking about? These things are required to experience what? Kingdom prosperity. All right. Thanking. T-H-A-N-K now. Thanking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, there used to be a song. I just want to say thank you, sir. Oh, yeah. Y'all yeah, didn't know that song, did you? But how many times do we use that word when, where God is concerned? Thank you, Jesus. Go to that traffic. Now, don't do that. No, I don't want to bring that up. Going through a traffic light, and you know, you went through it red, and you just didn't get caught. No, that, that ain't the one we want. But if you've done something that's good, amen, and the rest, results behind it just really, uh, you know, glamorize you, what do you do? Just say, thank you, Father. Thank you. My wife was, we were driving down the highway, <laughs> and I took my hands off the wheel. <laughs> I was wild in them days. Say the back in the days. Come on, say back in the day. I was wild. I, I took my hands. I was going to bring the tongue, thanking the Lord. And she said, hey, fool, get your hands out there and grab the steering wheel. <laughs> Look, I believe if God had it, he had it. Now, that was not wise. Do not follow that lead. That is not wisdom. That's stupidity. 
But I just had the confidence, you know, I, the Spirit of God just hit me. And I threw my hands in there and I act like I really did care. You know? <laughs> I love him and he loves me. All right, let's go, go over these again. These seven things are required for kingdom prosperity. Number one is giving. For God so loved the world, he what? Number two, working. Now, working is not evil. And don't look down on, the, on your assignment that you already have in the earth. Don't compare what you're doing with what no one else is doing. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It matters how you do it. Amen? All right. Number four is what? Trusting. What is it? All right. Number three, thinking. As a man thinks, what happens? In his heart, so is he. How much neighbors say your thinking is important? And don't let it get in the gutter? Okay. All right. The next one is what? Trusting. Say trusting. That's having confidence. Say having what? Confidence. Amen. Confidence in the Word of God. And then next what? Waiting. The Scripture says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Shall do what? Now, this is not the kind of sitting down waiting. It's like a person who is a waiter in a restaurant who's serving people. All right? They that wait. In other words, you're serving or you're doing God's business for other people. So what are you doing? You're waiting on them. You're carrying the word. You're using your life to be an example. You're not using profanity. You're using the word on the situation. You're not looking down on people. You're helping them to rise up and to be what? Smarter and wiser. That's what we're here for. Tell your neighbor, that's what we're here for. And then what is the next one? Talking. What? Talking. Now this is your Christian talk. This is your child of God way of communicating with other people. Not messy and talking about other people with your friends and your buddies. You might know a lot of things, but a child of God will take it to God and talk it to him and will not carry it to other people and just spread whatever it is, regardless of how ugly it is, how wrong it is. You still don't have the right to condemn nobody else. You try to be the example for them for they can come out of that mess that they're already in. Amen. And you do that through love. Come on now. There's, there's too much mess going on in the church. And we got to eradicate that stuff. And you can only do it through love. When I say love, I'm not talking about natural love. I'm talking about the God kind of love. The agape, hasi kind of what? Love. Amen. Being the example. Tell you, being an example. And then... Lastly, what? Thanking. Look at somebody and say, thank you. Yeah, just thank you because you're seated on my bench. or the same one row I'm on. Come on. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Amen. Now, mere giving alone is not enough for you to experience kingdom prosperity. Make a note of that. Mere giving alone is not enough for you to experience kingdom prosperity. And that's what most people believe. I gave, I gave, I gave. That's not enough. It only connects you to. What does giving do? It connects you to or makes available to you God's blessing. Giving does what now? It connects you to or makes available to you the blessing of God. I gave, I gave. No, 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 no. It's not sufficient. Now, although it is necessary to work, it is not sufficient enough for you to experience kingdom prosperity. God's way of blessing you is beyond your wildest imagination. You can never run out when you start doing things God's way. It's like David said, your cup will run over. What will happen? Your cup will run over. And that's what's in line for the child of God. That's why the enemy fights you so hard where your money is concerned, where your, 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 your presence is concerned. He doesn't want you to be in church, and he certainly doesn't want you to give in church because that's a way to rob you of the benefits of the kingdom that God has already set you in. So you have to make up your mind. I'm going to obey God. God said just like he did with David, he wants your cup to do what again? Run over. 
That means that the bank, you got to get you another bank to go to. You got one bank, get you another bank. Not 50 cents over here and 50 cents over there. No, you have so much in that. It's like, well, look, this is all our bank is able to what? Secure. Just go over to the next bank. Now, not with the same company. You know, you, you, you wise people. You know how to handle that. I tell you, if you don't know how to handle that. Come on, look at somebody else. You know how to handle that. Uh, it's God's way. Look at him say, it's God's way. <laughs> now, creative work guarantees productivity. Creative work guarantees productivity, which guarantees wealth. Creative work. Now, the creator lives in you. God lives on the inside of you. And he gives you witty invention. What else? Creative ideas. And what else? Now, God gives that to us. It's in us. Hunch neighbor says, in me. It's, look at somebody that says, in me. And I want to share it with you, too, because I'm a blessing. Come on, say, I'm a blessing. All right. Oh, man. Creative work guarantees productivity, which guarantees wealth. Wealth is ordained by God to be managed by God's folk. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the, who are the just? The saints. He's talking about those that have been justified. The wealth of the what? Sinner is laid up for the what? So we just got to get it down. And my time is up, and I thank you for yours. Get a lot of hand clap. you to stay connected with us. Find us on YouTube at ASCC Ministries and find us on Facebook at Agape Store J.